Hey there, thanks so much for stopping by another real-time edit. Today I got this fun red-eyed Vireo that needs a little help here. Um, the shot's got some potential, but this one definitely not quite there in the original exposure and or lighting. So, let's see if we can make it something good. I don't know why that was reset there. Anyway, uh, let's bump up the exposure. Definitely try and show off this red eye. That's kind of the whole point of this bird. And... Let's see, I think I'm just going to drop a radial right around the head here. Feather it up a bit and then just drop that exposure everywhere else. <clears throat> and I think that's going to be good. I'm going to shift the white balance a little bit more and then just give a little highlight punch right there. And then I think we're good. Let's do a little bit of a crop. Lose that one little white thing down there in the bottom left try and off center it a little bit more i wish i would have composed it better in camera but he did not stay there very long at all all right let's see if we got photoshop running here <clears throat> all right just waiting for the image to open up um so the main thing on this one is i'm going to just try and enhance the bird's face and eye and really kind of make that stand out everything else is kind of got a, a nice feel to it i think already um, I'm happy with where that's at. Let me bring the palettes over here. There we go. And yeah, I don't think I need to do any, well, you know, I was going to say I don't need to do any cloning, but I'm going to do some softening. So I do have a lot of foreground that I shot through here and this branch is getting just a little heavy up there. So I'm just going to pretend like I shot through more foreground on that to kind of just soften it up a little bit more. And I'm basically just sampling some paint and painting it in there. All right. A little bit of burn in some areas now. <clears throat> Something like that. And then we will get to punching this bird up. Let's see if we can get him looking a little bit more visible there. Uh, I'm going to start out by going precise on this, even though I don't want that much of this effect on most of the bird but i do want it on a good portion of the bird so uh, this is why i'm going to do it this way so we'll get nice and precise there i don't really need to worry about the bill or those little fun whisker feathers there where that highlight edge is going to get a little bit too hot but again i'll manage that after i kind of mask out the entire bird here don't need to worry about the foot There we go, just about done. Bear with me here. All right, let's fill that in. There we go. And then we'll finish tweaking this up with some soft edges on these real soft feathers there. All right, just about done there. We'll do the same on this side. Just kind of get these feathers. I'm not worried about being exact on them, just as long as it looks kind of close. I think we'll get away with it. All right, I'm just going to save that selection real quick in case I want to use it again. Type that wrong, but whatever. All right, now I'm going to start painting away the areas that I don't want to get lighter. So any of these like real bright areas, I'm just going to tone those back down. And then I want to kind of fade the bottom of the bird in here. So he kind of just blends in with that, uh, the surroundings there a little bit more. And then there we go. A nice, accurate, but kind of soft, blended in dodge on the bird. All right, let's get to the eye here. So we're going to dodge up the catch light and then the eye itself will shift that eye a little bit more red but less yellow because there's just a lot of green light casting in on this right now. So that seems better. And then, yeah, just because of that green light, I'm just going to hit a little bit of magenta hit on the whole bird. And there's where I can use that selection again, right? Because I have that nice and accurate. 
Um, something like that feels pretty good. Uh, I noticed the blacks kind of overall were getting a little weak. So we'll do that. And then <clears throat> I'll hit this uh, bill a little bit here because that's kind of getting a little washed out. So I'm just going to burn that down uh, nicely. And yes, I know this is way too much right now, but you will see why I'm going that far. I do this all the time. It's a technique I do all the time where I kind of paint it in precisely how much I want it. And then I'll just kind of like fade it back a little bit there. There we go. Nice. Gosh, I think that might be about it. Let me uh, let's see if I can do a little bit more burning up on these top edges. And then let's have a little bit more fun with the color um, overall. So... I like that some of the blue is kind of peeking through in some areas here. So we'll just kind of exaggerate that. There's a little bit of like a magenta kick happening down there. So we'll exaggerate that. Then we got the yellow that's happening right over top of the bird. I don't want it to go on the bird. So I'll load up that selection real quick and make that uh, not get applied to that. And then just a tad more green in just some of these areas. And there we go. Now we have this nice kind of almost tie-dyed looking colorful piece happening here. Uh, a little bit too much magenta on the top of the head. So this is where I probably should have labeled some of these. But there it is. Because I got a little bit too much going on with the layers. And you know what? I'll actually take that one. I think this is the yellow layer. And I'll put some of that on top of the bird's head there. Because it was just getting a little bit too out of hand. And actually a little bit of yellow right there should do the trick. All right. I think I am thrilled with that. So before, after. Oh, yeah. All right. I got to do that again because I thought I saw a halo kick in there. No, looks good. I was noticing this area right here. So this is something I do all the time. Watch, I'll do it before, after. And I just really want to watch carefully on the background right there just to make sure it's not bleeding out into the background. And it's not. It's looking pretty good. But then I did just see this one little spot right there gone. All right, save it. <clears throat> I'll compare this to the original. There's going to be a big difference here, but a uh, pretty quick edit overall, I think. I mean, how far are we in now? Yeah, seven minutes in. All right, um, real quick, uh, head on over to rayhennessy.com and just go to the workshop section to learn more about how I'm doing exactly what I'm doing. Uh, hit up the online workshops if you want to find out more there. All the info's there. I don't need to tell you any more than that. Uh, you can just visit the website and find that out. All right, let's compare the before and after. See, this is what I'm talking about where I said the, like the photo had potential, you know? Um, I could see the potential in it both when I shot it and when I saw it on the computer screen, uh, but it obviously needed a lot of editing. Now, I probably could have exposed it a little bit brighter to begin with and gotten closer there, but I don't want to go too much brighter because then I'm going to lose the, the textures and the, the richness and tones that I have back there. But in any case, I mean, just a massive difference on that. So this is where editing comes into play, folks. You know, um, I know a lot of people don't want to push their photos this far. Again, I don't feel like I took anything that wasn't there and made it happen. I just kind of teased out the details out of the raw file where I wanted it to be, you know. Um, but then this kind of holds true to the original intent of that photo. So anyway, there's that final image. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. and I'll see you on the next one.